Today, we have the distinct pleasure of being joined by Mulai Ahmed and Mohammed Brahim of the Sahrawi Association of the United States of America. Here in the United States, uh, people know very little about the Western Sahara and the Western uh, uh, the Sahrawi people. So um, let, let's start at the beginning. Um, the coastline of, of uh, the Western Sahara, it's, uh, it's about 690 miles. It has a Morocco on the north, Mauritania on the south, and Algeria, uh, Algeria to, to the east. There's a thin strip separating the Western Sahara from Mauritania. Morocco violated the ceasefire uh, in an act of belligerence because it wants to connect a highway to Mauritania where it's working with the United Arab Emirates on a lot of colonial projects. And um, the, the, the Sahrawi people from uh, Tindouf uh, occupied, uh, 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 sorry, um, liberated uh, Western Sahara and from the camps in Algeria came in a peaceful, nonviolent, um, way to say you are crossing into our land. So uh, tell us what happened and and where we are today. So um, thank you for that um, intro. So what I would just go back and like you said, where the Gergarat is. El Gergarat is considered a basically the route, Morocco route to the south and the, um, the Gergarat opening lies in the very south of Western Sahara, few kilometers from Mauritania. Morocco opened this, this, um, this route was opened illegally to begin with since that's, that's a demilitarized zone or what we call it the buffer zone. Morocco uses this as a, an extension of its a plundering of the territory. Mor Morocco wants a cross basically wants the goods and the commercial traffic, the products that are plundered from the territory of Western Sahara, sent to the very south, to the Southern um, African or the Western uh, African nations. This is in, in itself, just opening that one route is in violation of the international law, in violation of the peace agreement, the ceasefire agreement that was broken after when Moroccan military intervened and attack the Sahrawi civilians. Now, I want to go back a little bit to what really led to this. And you've asked this question earlier, the fact that the stalemate for 20 years, the Sahrawi people, the people of Western Sahara, have waited for peaceful means. And even until the Gergarat, everything was peaceful. But they've waited for a peaceful resolution. Yet, they've also witnessed the illegal exploitation, exploration of their resources. Add to that, seeing these resources being exported to the neighboring, Moroc neighboring um, African nations. A number of individuals from a number of uh, peaceful protesters, men, women, went to the South and decided that this is unacceptable and we cannot accept this. And we will go with whatever power we have. They went, they went to the very South of Ostatu al Gergarat. They protested for a few weeks Prior to those few weeks, Morocco had been attempting to, um, to brush it basically as if it's some kind of a Polisario supported, that this is the Polisario led. And I can assure you that there is nothing like that. That was a true result of a frustration of the civilians who went in and protested that. Now, prior to the prior to prior to the Morocco military coming out of that uh, of the berm, crossing to the to basically dismantle and attack the civilians, the Sahara the, the Polisario stated and in various occasions reached out to the United Nations Security Council to the Security General, stating for fact that if the Moroccan uh, military cross the buffer zone, attack on the civilian, this will means the end of the ceasefire. Morocco looked at that and thought that I was a bluff by the Polisario. Now, the first thing that happened, Morocco did come out, did try to come uh, that day, basically more than one um, crosses of that berm, it was not just from the Gergarat, but from other points of the, of the berm, try, and went into and attacked the Sahrawi civilians. Now, the Polisario at that point declared that the, the ceasefire is a null, and there was some 
fire exchange at that point. Luckily, there was no uh, no protester hurt at that time. But should the Polisario not intervene, the result would have been something completely different. And like you said earlier, after that, the Sahrawi people took up arms and um, took up arms and Morocco basically thought of this, this is the opportunity for us to speed up the process, to pull up however many or pull up whatever string with the US admi current administration to speed up the process of establishing, normalizing in exchange for the recognition of Western Sahara. And um, that's how I see, or that's how we know that the, the, the events unfolded from the Gergarat all the way to where we're at right now. The United States in the last year or so has sold billions of dollars of weapons to Morocco. By selling weapons to Morocco, a, you know, a, a belligerent uh, party, the United States is recklessly endangering the region. And the way I see it, setting up a situation where we may have another Iraq and Syria and uh, extremism res result. This is a this is a very dangerous and scary situation. It is indeed, and and um, just to comment on that, the fact that the United States has the United States has been supporting Morocco throughout the years, even during number of administration, but there was never a clear um, military. Um, there was never a clear acknowledgement that was said that where these these weapons will be used. With the recent developments. The U.S., if if the U.S. continue to sell um, military hardware to Morocco, there is a clear, there is a clear one. They are acknowledging that Morocco, that whatever is happening, was, and this is maybe we'll get to this at some point, where uh, the recent um, the recognition of sovereignty over Western Sahara, you would get to the point where the U.S. is no longer obliged to to, uh, to exclude Western Sahara now, they will look at Western Sahara as internal issue within, within, within Morocco. And therefore it gives them the green light to sell weapons and hardware to them. There, the US legislation, the US Congress have blocked various resolutions, various uh, bills prior to block selling any weapons to anyone who will be using it against what is clearly know that is a a, 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 uh, a colonization and occupied nation that is the people of West Sahara or the Polisario have every right to fight and take arms and everything that Morocco takes on as far as military trades we the, the own, we know exactly where it's going it's going to be used against the Sahrawi people it's going to be used against the Polisario it's going to be used against anything and, and probably trying to enforce um that berm, or even try to 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 conquest the rest of the, the rest of the uh, the liberated zone. So, the United States is taking a is complicit in this occupation in this colonization. The United States is taking part in a dangerous game that, like you said, that it will and it will and it it could and it will destabilize the region. Algeria is a neighboring. Um, I don't think Morocco will dare to move to um, to to reach the Algerian border as far as the refugee camps. That just would, like you said, create ignite something bigger than what Morocco can handle, especially right now. Um, so to just comment on what you said earlier, yes, the US is playing a very dangerous, a very dangerous game that could definitely result in another vacuum up in North Africa to expand that sub-Sahara, that's to expand the Sahara, destabilized, allowing the extremism, giving an extension, another pocket for extremists and for anything that could be seen or could be deemed as destabilizing the region. So, um, yeah, the U.S. is complicit in this, and the U.S. should not be taking, um, should not be trading weapons with Morocco, knowing exactly what it's going to be used against people. The U.S. itself, until two days or three days or a week ago, recognized as a self-governing territory. Um, I would like to add something else about the Gergarat breach because I know that the Gergarat bre uh, breach or passageway is illegal because it was not included in the ceasefire agreement. And here I would like to recall the military agreement number one that was uh, that has to be uh, modified uh, because it never included 
in the first place the existence of the Gargarat breach. And so the UN now, the UN role is to um, legalize or to modify these agreements, rectify them, and at the same time should also to, uh, assume its responsibilities toward the two parts of the conflict. Uh, this is just on the side because uh, there is a call also for the UN to assume its responsibilities towards its own commitment to organization of a referendum and also preventing any misunderstanding of the terms of the UN peace settlement plan. I believe the uh, US or the Trump uh, administration has proposed selling as much as uh, 1 billion in weapons, including uh, Reaper drones to Morocco, just one day after President Trump paved the way for a diplomatic deal you know, under the uh, deal of the century, whereby Morocco would normalize ties with, uh, with Israel. And in return, as a gift, as a part of the bargain, Morocco's claim over Western Sahara will be rectified and the US uh, Trump administration recognizes Morocco's claim or sovereignty over Western Sahara. So <clears throat> this will uh, will actually result into creating a, a, a very unique situation because as my friend here, Molai, specified, uh, Western Sahara issue will be dealing with internally. And uh, these weapons, of course, will be used against Sahrawis or against Polisario, you know, during the war. And this is very unethical uh, very irresponsible from the part of the U.S. because civilians and other people might be targeted by these weapons and also because the matter is still in the hands of the U.N. and the U.S. should have never, or the Trump administration should have never intervened to uh, do such an act. And I don't know, it just, I guess it's a... Uh, uh, a coup d'etat against the international law, and it's also a very immoral, very illegal thing to do towards people who have never, who have never, who has never uh, resorted to terrorism, who uh, only have one claim, which is the right to self-determination. So this will bring also will bring us also to <clears throat> reconsider the way the people of West Sahara be looking. Uh, you know, peacefully at this conflict, especially after the resumption of war, and how they're going to deal with this proclamation, and how things will turn around in the next few, I don't know, months, years, I don't know how long it's going to take, but everything seems to be a little bit gloomy for some Sahrawis, while some other Sahrawis are sure that the war is only answer, and with all what it implies, and of course, we don't know yet, uh, what's going to happen with the Biden administration.